All right, welcome back. It's back to the basics, and today we are talking about voice codecs. That's everything from G711, G722, and G729, and don't forget about Opus. I'm excited. Let's go! All right, welcome back, and we are talking voice codecs. So what is a voice codec? Well, essentially, when you want to use voice over IP, you need a way to take the audio, the spoken voice, and turn it into digital information to transport that over the network. The element that does that is a codec. There are several different types of codecs, all that do a little bit different things. They do a couple things. One is they may compress or not compress. They may be more efficient at taking the, the spoken audio and translating that into data, the amount of data that's required to send the audio stream. And then they all may have uh, different levels of quality of reproduction of voice. And then lastly, error handling. Um, if there's loss in the network, how well do they adapt to network loss? And so we're going to talk about the common codecs that are out there on the internet and SIP providers today. So the first one being G711, and it's G.711, uh, which is basically an uncompressed codec. It takes about 64K of bandwidth, and it is one of the most widely used codecs for LAN-type voice traffic. There's also another codec, which is G.722, which kind of is, is in parallel to G.711 from a bandwidth perspective. It, it also takes 64K to operate, but it operates with a wide band codec, which means it opens up the band of audio so you, you get a richer sounding voice. So G722, that, that codec sounds a little bit better than G711 because it expands the frequency range of the voice so you get deeper sounds and, and potentially higher, higher sounds as well um, in that codec. G722, I guess, as, as one more comparison before I move on, is that it can transmit the data rates are variable. So contrary to G711 at around 64K, G722 operates at 48, 56, and 64K based on the audio that, that's going through. So the next codec, G.729, it uses about 8K of bandwidth and is a good codec for, it uses a, a code book and that's how it gets the, the compression down on the audio. It also can handle some loss. Um, it is a licensed codec, so you're gonna pay for the G729 codec in one way or another, wh whether when you buy the handsets or you buy the licensing. Um, but G729 is another common codec for WAN connectivity. There's also a few that have come on to the scene around with Skype and some of these other uh, internet-based voice and uh, audio solutions. ILBC, it uses about 15K of bandwidth, is an open codec, and uh, in is, is used in, in a lot of uh, internet-based communication. It also handles loss pretty well. And I wouldn't be mentioning some of the common codecs if I didn't cover Opus. So that's a that's an up and coming codec which also supports stereo. It does scale. It starts out at around uh, six kilobits of traffic, and it scales all the way up to 510 kilobits per second. It supports stereo audio. It supports uh, streaming voice and audio like of of music. Um, it can be used uh, online for internet, internet streaming, things like that. It is more of a common codec that, that's starting to get some traction now. Um, so that's basically it. We covered G711, G722, the wideband version, G729, uh, typically for WAN. ILBC also could be for WAN or internet. And we also talked about the Opus codec. So when would you use which codec? Well, typically, on a LAN, we are going to recommend using G722. It's a wideband codec, it's low CPU requirements, and it sounds really, really good. When WAN bandwidth is limited, or you want to use QoS and uh, limit the amount of voice traffic you want to prioritize, we'd recommend something like G729 if your PBX supports it, or ILBC. Either one of those codecs are going to sound really good, reasonably well, for WAN where you've got uh, limitations of bandwidth. And lastly, Opus, we haven't seen that implemented in a lot of the private uh, PBXs. It's more in the open source community. Uh, so things like Asterix, we've seen implementations of Opus. But typically on, on more of your closed source uh, product base, 
uh, voice solutions, you're typically gonna be looking at G729 or ILBC. That's really it. That's a voice codec, and that's a quick overview of what they are. If there's anything I said in this video that you wanna know more about, make sure you leave a comment, like, subscribe, and we will see you on the next Back to the Basics. Thanks for watching. See you later.